I want to say this. It's MAGA country. And, and, and Seamus, too. Yeah, that's right. Garfield when I was Ridge, a little kid, I lived there. Garfield Ridge, boys, right here. And this is blue Chicago. <laughs> in 2016 was blue. It started to turn red in 2020. And now Garfield Ridge and Clearing are red. Yeah. Not, not the entirety, but in the in the westernmost portion, there's a gigantic red square of my entire neighborhood. Everyone's like Trump. It's because of you and the manosphere that you lead, obviously. Yeah, so help like, us. I love that they're talking about how there's like no, no, uh, you know, Tim Pool or whatever. And they totally ignore the communist. <laughs> Totally. Uh, the, tw- the Twitch well, communist. I'm not even going to say his many name. Of, yeah, Everyone yeah, yeah. knows well, the Twitch communist that I'm talking about, the himbo. Right, yes, but I, I want to say this because a point was made. Mehdi Hassan was talking to uh, some guys on some show, and he was like, they said Kamala should have gone on Rogan. And he goes, no, we Democrats needed Joe Rogan. And the response was, they had one. His name was Joe Rogan. That's right. That's yeah. right. That's right. Well, I, I also just want to point this out. This term manosphere is hilarious because it just turns being a man into a political opinion. What do these podcasts <laughs> actually have in common with one another? What they're saying is we have failed to secure the male vote. So what we're going to do is tie together a coalition of things in podcasts that men happen to enjoy and then say this is a dangerous political movement that was working against us. I, so, I, I need to stress this real quick because they're saying we don't have a Tim Pool. You did have a Tim yep. Pool. His yep. name was Tim Pool. Mm-hmm. My neighborhood in Chicago, which has been Democrat my whole life, which had the mayor come down, a Democrat mayor that everyone cheered for, is now voting for Trump. It's not that you don't have one. It's that Democrats want to live in a world where the only the only thing that makes you a Democrat is choosing to be a Democrat. They're like, we don't they, have a Garfield Ridge. They, they, they're <laughs> thinking <laughs> what, what they're saying is we need a podcaster who no matter what happens, yeah. no matter what the yeah, policies, yeah. they will always just say they're a Democrat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, the liberals have ostracized everything masculine and coded it as right wing. And now when it's come to bite them in the ass in the election with younger men, they're saying, oh, what's going on? Why? Why are they, they going to Theo Vaughn, Joe Rogan, people who talk about stereotypical masculine things? And why is this all right wing coded because they made it that way they made they ostracized all the people who if you go to the gym it's it's right wing coded all of these things that are traditionally masculine have become right wing coded and now it's if you get married them. and have children right that's now coded. like that's a, a that's bad right wing that's fine let it's it's actually a good thing for us i agree because the if the left hates young men ha- yeah. hates masculinity yeah, yeah. hate because and there's there are innumerable positive things about masculinity competency is masculine uh, there's there's just a, an endless array of things that are that are masculine that are good. If the left hates those things, yeah. if they hate winning, if they hate all things that that go along with masculine men, that's okay. Let yeah. them come to the right. I, I agree. Think they, I think they also admitted here that the media is on the the outswing. Um, they're saying their op eds are no longer relevant now. What matters is going on Theo Vaughn and Tim Pool and Joe Rogan. <laughs> yeah, totally. It doesn't matter if you write an op ed in the New York Times. Nobody reads it anymore. Nobody cares. It's an echo chamber. And I will I will give a shout out again to Josie on YouTube. You can search for seventeen seventy six x Josie and subscribe. Just at ten thousand subscribers with their new channel. So shout out. Well, yeah. I just want to mention, I'm actually shocked that they didn't mention White Guys for Harris as a force <laughs> that helped mm-hmm. deliver the fraction of the male vote that they did get. The reality is I was watching some of their ads and making fun of them, and <laughs> you'll notice, absolutely, you'll notice that in none of the messaging they put out there, do they ever say a single good thing about white men? Yeah. So it's all, you can be different from the other white men. You can you can stand above the fray. But it's like, if you want to appeal to a demographic, you have to at least be willing to say one, <laughs> one good thing about them <laughs> as a group. They cannot. They can't do it. I, I was watching an ad they made a while ago, and it was actually one I saw because Matt Walsh retweeted it and said, like, this looks like a woman's idea of what a man ad should be or something. Yeah, yeah. It was just obviously not written by a man. And if it was certainly not written by a straight man. But it's going on about like, hey, white guys kind of stinks being told we suck all the time i get it but but it's like okay let's just let's just uh sidestep the fact that it's your party telling us we suck all the time and then never say any reason why that shouldn't happen or why white men are good and so this is my challenge to to any political leader on the left or any pundit on the left who's concerned about the fact that you don't have the white male vote say one good thing about white men without throwing caveats at it without giving a but without mentioning historic injustices say one thing you appreciate or are grateful to white men for don't they, they don't will never do it, do it. don't never exactly do it. Don't and that is why they him. will never don't that is why they will him. never get our vote. we like the results on tuesday <laughs> don't listen to seamus we yeah. like the results yeah. we got don't yeah, listen uh, to him. I, actually i think the important thing for democrats to to realize is that 
Kamala ran a perfect campaign and it's misogyny's fault. Exactly. It's yeah, misogyny's just, they, fault. And they should, they should uh, next time they run a campaign, well, it should be the same as Kamala. They're, they're in meltdown <laughs> right now, though. Again. They're melting down because they've already alienated white men uh, intentionally. But the, the group of people, the two groups of people that delivered that margin of victory were black guys and Hispanics broadly. Oh, yeah. So the new white supremacists are blacks and Hispanics. And you've heard it on The View, you've heard it on cable news, that the black men and Hispanics are now being accused of misogyny. That's right. And that might carry some water if Trump had not also done better with women than he did last time. <laughs> the women started to move over, including young and single women. Well, see, Michael, the women did it because they're racist and the minorities did it because they're, <laughs> they're sexist. sexist. Right, but right. I'll also say this. If the Democrats weren't in a bad enough position now with some of the minority groups that they're losing as voters, I think they've put themselves in an even worse position after this election, because a lot of what I have seen has been statements about how this was only because of racism or, or some other kind of ism, but primarily racism. And part of why I think that's so insulting is because, firstly, it's not as if a black person can't win a presidential election. We've seen it happen. Barack Obama literally won the presidential oh, wait, election. His mom was we white. Know, I don't know. We that know. We know. We know. Hold Joe on. Biden, I just, we know that black people can win elections in this country. And so I just find it astounding and incredibly tone deaf that when they nominated a woman who didn't win a primary, yep. who was extremely unlikable, who was a cackling, bubble-headed fool, who was far to the left of what any American wanted, and then she lost. They went, that's ah, because she's black. We just can't nominate black candidates and win. Yeah, I guess the, the real issue they should be dealing with is the we nominate part. Be, because, <laughs> yes. you know, it, probably if they want their uh, black woman or however Kamala's going to identify next time, if they want her to win the general, <laughs> they, they need her to win a single primary ever. That yes. is probably going to be conducive to her success. And it's because they're so shocked. You see, like, how did this happen? How is it that this horrible candidate who's very unpopular and didn't win a single primary lost the presidential election to yeah. the single most popular candidate in the Republican Party? And how, how could this have happened? And it's how really obvious, actually. How ridiculous is their messaging, right? They complained, all, like, even Jimmy Kimmel was like, oh, democracy's in danger. We had a perfectly fair democratic election the night previous yeah. to when he's saying democracy's in danger and they say oh we're worried about our democracy and kamala harris was the least democratically then, elected per or, or the, you, sele she was selected there was nothing democratic right. about her selection you saw though during her concession she implicitly admitted that the democracy threat was all nonsense because she she said Guys, it's going to be okay. We're sad, and it's okay to be sad, yep. but it's okay. And so she's basically saying, hey, guys, we just elected Hitler, and that's okay. Yeah. And so Hitler's okay yes. with me. That's so, what she's saying. Well, the, and, and, oh, you go ahead. I was going to say, I, the, I just monologue. The two for a bit. things that I feel as though the Kamala Harris campaign was focusing on was one, so called democracy. And that was kind of debunked when she didn't win any primary votes. Mm -hmm. And she was focusing on January 6th and how Donald Trump was allegedly a threat to democracy. <laughs> he was going to lock up all his political opponents. But how does that make any sense when Trump is facing multiple convictions across the country? Then abortion was their second top issue, and Trump dispelled that very very aggressively when he said constantly that he would come out against the national abortion ban yep. and wouldn't push that. As the so he quickly said, dispelled both of their big law. narratives, their settled big spin. Law. And then we're dealing with the immigration crisis. And um, I'm glad the election turned out the way it did. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. In terms of um, what Trump has to do in his first two years, you know, in case things flip and he's not able to get things done. I mean, obviously, the deportations and the border security has to be first and foremost. Yeah. And also, I think something has to be done to put pressure on states to require photo ID in order to vote. Thanks for checking out this clip from Timcast IRL. Make sure to watch the show live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. Subscribe to this channel and we will see you all there.